Hey guys, Zach here from digitalconstructive.com and in this video we're going to be talking about the C11 license or the elevator contractor license. So the C11 license is for elevator installers, sometimes you'll just hear elevator contractors, elevator maintenance, elevator service, you know, home elevator installation, freight elevator specialists, elevator consultants, construction elevators, residential elevators. This license pretty much covers the gamut for all different types of uh, elevator work in California. So the C11 elevator contractor license, an elevator contractor fabricates, erects, installs, and repairs elevators, including sheave beams, motors, sheaves, cable and wire rope, guides, cab, counterweights, doors, including sidewalk, elevator doors, automatic and manual controls, signal systems, and all other devices and equipment associated with the safe and efficient installation and operation of electrical, hydraulic, and manually operated elevators. And that's straight from the CSLB website, which is the Contractor State License Board. So essentially the C11 license is required for anybody looking to charge over $500 for elevator associated work. Now how long does it take to get the C11 license? You're looking at about a 90 day process. Um, you know, time of year, criminal history, or whether or not your application or is put up for further review are all factors that can potentially add time to the 90 day process. But on average, you're looking at about a six to eight week application processing time. And then three to four weeks later, usually you go and take the exam. Now, I've seen situations where people got their license in a shorter time frame, and I've seen it take a lot longer than 90 days. This isn't, you know, by any means me telling you how long it's going to take. But on average, this is what you can expect. So what are the basic requirements? You've got to be at least 18 years of age. You've got to have a valid driver's license or USA ID. You've got to have a social security or ITIN number. You can't currently be on probation or parole. And for the experience requirements, you've got to have four years journeyman level experience. And it has to be within the last 10 years. So a journeyman can perform all the duties associated with their trade. The CLSLB is going to expect you to have four years full-time journey level experience within the last 10 years. You've got to have somebody who can sign off and verify this experience. And you've got to be able to document it just in case the CSLB asks you to prove your experience. So who can sign off on your experience? You could have a general contractor. You could have a C11 license holder. You could have a foreman or supervisor. You could have a fellow journeyman or a fellow employee. Or you could use a business associate. And these are all people that would basically sign off and verify the experience that you have. So filling out your contractor license application. So the person that you choose to sign off for you, your qualifying individual, will also need to provide a brief but detailed description of your knowledge and skill set. So the way this description is written will be critical to whether or not your application is accepted. So for example, you know, John Martin has a lot of experience will not be enough. You know, basically the CSLB is going to want to see a description that's written more like John Martin has installed supports, constructed man lifts, constructed hoistway gates, and installed machinery calculated clearances, for example. So they're going to want you to get very descriptive about what exactly you really can do um, in terms of elevator construction, maintenance, repair, installation, etc. So your criminal history. Now, if you do have a criminal history, you can absolutely get a contractor license. You know, don't worry. Um, you know, you will be doing live scan fingerprinting. So your best bet is just to be 100% honest on the application, even if it was expunged, even if it happened years ago, even if you don't think, you know, it was that, you know, big a deal, just be 100% honest, because it's going to come up, um, you know, when you do your fingerprinting. So, you know, mainly the CSLB is, is looking for applicants that have cases associated with fraud, forgery and embezzlement. So typically, if you don't have any you know, issues associated with those three charges, then you should be fine. But just be, you know, honest on the application and be ready to submit any court documents that the state ask, asks you for. So what is on the exam? It's going to be two parts. There's going to be 115 questions of law, and that's contractor law. And then another 115 questions specifically on elevators. 
you'll have three hours to complete each portion. It's a multiple choice exam, and it's going to be done on site on a computer. And you can bring a translator if you need to. So the C11 license portion of the test is going to be 11% planning and estimation, 5% project preparation, 22% install and modernize elevators, dumb waiters, and lifts, 5% installing and modernizing escalators and moving walks, 35% conveyance, repair, maintenance, and service, and 22% safety. So for a deeper look about what's going to exactly be on the C11 license exam, I would suggest you check out our website. We've got a full guide to the C11 license, but this is kind of a snapshot of what's going to be on the trade portion of the test. So after you pass the C11 license exam, you'll get your results immediately. You know, the test is done on a computer, so you'll, you'll know right there on the spot. Uh, retakes, you can retake the exam. Uh, right now it costs about $60. And usually you can take the exam again within three weeks. I've seen situations where people took it sooner than that, but generally, you know, three weeks, they'll have you come back in and taken it again. Um, you will have to pay your license activation, and you'll have to provide a contractor bond number to actually get your license. Um, you know, I've got a separate video on the current costs um, for, you know, right now, how, long, how much it costs to get a contractor license. I definitely suggest you check out that video at the end of this. And then usually you get your contractor license in the mail, I'd say in about you know two to three weeks. So how much does it cost? You're going to have a state application fee. You're going to have a license activation fee that you pay every two years. You're going to have to cover the cost of fingerprinting, which depend on where you go. And then you've got to get a contractor bond, which depends on who you get your contractor with, bond with, and then a number of other factors. Um, I've got a separate video on the fees and then contractor bonding. So at the end of this video, I would definitely suggest that you check out those two videos. So in conclusion, getting your C11 license, it's a very smooth process. Um, you know, you've just got to make sure that you have all the correct information and that you fill out the application correctly. You know, we've got a ton of content. We've got a ton of videos showing you how to do pretty much everything. So, you know, as long as you're studying, you pass the test and, you know, you have all the correct information when you're filling out your application and you know what to expect, you should be fine. And getting your elevator contractor license shouldn't be too big of a deal. So, again, my name is Zach from digitalconstructive.com. You know, if there's a video you want to see us make, drop it in the comments. You know, we're constantly creating new videos and new content. So, you know, drop us a comment. Click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and thanks again for watching.